tracks and kick kick drum i think us pe we had applied some eq and i made to listen to how the different kinds of eq sounds and uh, yeah that was pretty much it about eq uske baad i think we moved on to compression and everything all right cool thanks yeah <clears throat> okay so aditya i'm assuming that uh, it's the same document which has been updated with the questions if yes then i'm not able to see any new queries as such so did any of you have any questions from last time or for this like specific like mastering session I mean, I, I did ask a few. It's on the talk. I don't think it's the same one. Uh, okay, maybe not then. Uh, Aditya, can you share uh, share the list with me? Hey, Anish, uh, I have one question from the previous uh, session. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've tried mixing and uh, like I have tried. I, like I was, I'm making a track called Lullaby, and so it's a, it's like a composition which is like a, like a, like a concert, concert is going on. I mean, not not okay. concert. It's it's called symphony orchestra kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So, usme uh, the I was kind of facing a problem with how to you know. Uh, uh you know mix the drums basically how much delay and how much uh, you know reverb bagera to add mm -hmm. like i kind of ended up with uh, you know what was sounding good like without having a lot of reverb like you know very subtle reverb and having a, a subtle delay but once again it's kind of feeling a bit you know not naturally like a concert sounding thing so that's something you know is there a different way like is there a way to eq i mean uh, assign different types of delays for uh, different instruments or you is do the same thing for every instrument or something like that um see i would say as far as delays concerned you can definitely uh, like experiment and have different delays for different uh, different instruments but uh, like if you're talking about like reverb specifically then I would say the majority of instrument is best if you keep them in the same room. That is the same reverb. So if you, how did you apply reverb? Like, did you use bussing? Like, is it on a different aux auxiliary track or a bus or something? Mm. Or, reverb, or, like, or did you put it on the audio audio channel? Like on the tracks itself, you put it as a insert. I put it on the tracks. Yeah. individual tracks right so try try something called bussing uh, which is okay. a very common technique that will help you save cpu plus you can have the same reverb applied to each one of the tracks uh, without doing like multiple things so um, in general i, I don't I, i can't really tell if too much reverb or too less reverb in in, in a song if it's sounding good to you then it is definitely a good thing because see whatever the be the case ears are really good in in anybody so if you're a musician okay. especially so if you think it sounds good it might just sound good but to make sure i would say it's best if you send it across to like people you know who are into music if you can if you want you can send it to me maybe i can listen to it and tell you what uh, changes you might need to do but try to get as many op opinions as you can about you know uh, the the vibe that you're going for it's more important than how much delay like is it like 3 db upar niche that doesn't really matter as far as the the general general things are concerned right so don't go into specifics yet just talk to people and uh, let them know that you've done this and all send them ask them if ask them what they think about it um, if it's sounding good to everybody then uh, okay 
Sure. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you can, uh, otherwise, for spe specific things, you can, uh, uh, like, if you're talking about, like, let's say, reverbs and all, as I said, you can put just one reverb for all of them and maybe try try to do, do it that way and experiment with different kinds of reverbs, I would say, not just uh, a standard reverb. I mean, I don't know what the standard reverb is because uh, whatever you used, like, try to change it up and uh, try different kinds of reverbs. Maybe use a hall reverb or a room reverb, right? You can experiment with that sense. Okay. And try to incorporate uh, 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 reverbs more, I would say, more than uh, it is. If you want that concert feeling, uh, the, the, the reverbs are a lot more important than the delays, I would say. Okay. Sure. So, guys, I've shared my screen. Oh, sorry. I'm not shared my screen. Aditya, I'm not able to share the screen. I think it's disabled for me. Can you enable that? Yeah, I got the document. Okay, guys, I've shared my screen. Let me know if you can see it. Anybody can give me a yes. It will be really helpful. Yep. Okay. So let's get started. Um, we've got a couple of questions. I would say not a couple, but maybe eight of them. So um, plugin used. I would say this is a master in it. Plugin used. Okay. Uh, you'll have to be a bit more specific. So. I think it doesn't depend on which plugin, but what the purpose of the plugin is. So we'll talk about that today. How do you use TU imaging on master channel? Okay, we'll go into that as well. Does multiband compression necessary in master channel? If yes, how do you use it? Okay, okay. How do you use saturation? Okay. Ideal gain staging before master channel. Okay. That's a good question. How do you hear issues while mastering versus while mixing? Isotope, ozone versus individual master channel plugins. Do you take artistic liberties while mastering or is it purely technical? Really good question, guys. Um, I've gotten a good idea as to how we can approach this uh, sort of session we have. So again, as usual, uh, before anything starts, I would just like to get anybody's opinion as to what mastering is. Can anybody tell me? We'll just pick off from there and uh, we can initiate. A con good conversation. Anybody? Go on, guys. Sargam, with Kulu. Well, uh, from what I know, it's uh, basically like kind of equalizing, like not in the EQ sense, but it's kind of making sure that the song or the music that you have mixed is like on an equal level on all kinds of speakers, the cars or the, like different kinds of speakers, basically making sure everything sounds normal and consistent. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good way to put it. Uh, just to get an idea, like, um, is everybody familiar with these kind of questions? Like, sabko pata hai kya ki mastering mein ye sab hoti hai? Or are there some of you out there who don't know what mastering is at all? If yes, then now is the time to, uh, speak out does anybody know what not like doesn't even have a remote idea what the word mastering means also okay i guess then everybody knows so i'll not go into any definitions because again assuming that you guys know about it so as sargam put it um, yeah in a way it is uh, quite quite close to what what uh, he said so it's uh, not exactly just EQ, it's a, it's a process, I would say, which basically ensures that your song or your mix uh, translates to other uh, systems, right? So when you mix, you mix it on a system, correct? You mix it on your speakers or your headphones. But uh, the problem with that is it might sound good on your headphones and your speakers, but not necessarily on other speakers and other headphones, right? 
and uh, specifically like something like an iPhone or a phone as well, where you know people listen through their earpods or AirPods or just plain old mic, uh, like mobile ka speaker and stuff. So, how do you make sure that uh, your song sounds doesn't sound at least horrible on on an iPhone speaker, right? At least you can like get some idea of uh, what the song is about uh, in a, in a way, like get the vibe of it at least, even if it's played on an iPhone speaker. So the process of ensuring this is called mastering and one sort of uh, like caveat on top of it is that mastering also involves uh, dealing with volumes um, in a way it, it is the process of uh, like getting your mix as loud as possible uh, so that it can compete with other songs out there. Like if you, if you have, downloaded any mp3 uh, in from internet or something you might have noticed that the, as soon as you play uh, that mp3 file it's really loud right if you play your mix alongside it like if you let's say you made a song or just just anything you made and just listen to that output file maybe you put, put it in an mp3 or something you'll listen to like tune sunai dega na ki kitna low volume hai tumhare mix ka as compared to what the actual song song sounds like so that's also one of the steps which is done in mastering, which is increasing the volume. And um, everything else uh, is just, a, I would say, icing on the cake in a way. Um, it is important, of course, the icing, on, icing is also important, but it is really crucial that you understand the basics first. So before I go any further, um, I would just like to reiterate the general flow of production. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, to avoid all the <laughs> all the problems which I did in my life. So, uh, as I said last time, also the first step in in production is basically the songwriting and the uh, whatever, like the melody writing, the lyrics, right? Once you're done with that, the actual production work starts. So you get into recording the song first. Then then you go into the mixing stage and then you go into the mastering stage as you guys already know about mastering in a way i would assume that you guys know this flow as well right you first record it then you mix it and then you master it the the point i want to hit home is that it's really crucial that you take care of the first two things first take care of the recording and take care of the mixing first like beat anything don't ever assume that you can fix a problem later on because you cannot Okay. Even if you think you might be able to, because you know, you are, you're some genius or something, it's always better to uh, fix it before uh, you go into, go, go any further. So do recording properly, do mixing very well first, and then move on to mastering. Don't even touch mastering until and unless you are happy with the mix. So the point at which you're happy with the mix would be where everything is sounding balanced, everything is sounding good. Not necessarily the volume, because again, as I said, volume is something that comes across in the mastering stage. So, uh, you need to keep, keep, your, uh, keep hold of that, uh, that gap between mixing and mastering. Now, again, like reiterating the gap here, sometimes what I used to do was do mixing and mastering at the same time. Kisine kiya hai pe, like, Unknowingly or knowingly, you, you might have mastered alongside while you're mixing. Kisi ne kiya hua yaad? Yeah, I was actually yeah. gonna ask, like, is it one after the other? Yeah, kabhi kabhi parallelly bhi hota. I was gonna ask that. Right. So, see, in the modern age, bhoot log hain jo alag approaches lete hain. But hitting home the, like, the classic way of doing it is obviously, like, first you mix it and then you master it. But, aaj kal, there's, there's ways you can get around with, you know, other ways as well. Depends on the kind of music for sure. That's, that's for sure. I know, but, uh, what I do in terms of like mastering before, uh, mixing. So I do some of it. I would say not all of it. The only things I do is some light compression on the, on the master bus and make of how it will sound at a loud volume. Okay. So 
one thing for sure i would say is that don't ever mix through a limiter like agar aapne limiter use kiya because uh, like again mastering uh, i'm sure you guys know a bit about it so don't mix through uh, mix through your limiters i would say uh, always put your limiter off and put your audio interface or your speakers up to the relative volume and don't like increase volume from the daw itself and this is one of the questions which uh, came up as well the gain staging right uh, so gain staging i would say is not actually before mastering okay gain staging is something you do before mixing <laughs> so it's one step before it so gain staging is basically ensuring that all your tracks are are at, at a decent volume and don't like go beyond a certain limit but uh, the important thing is that you make sure nothing is clipping that's that's the basic thing about it now if you ensure all that you know the the levels are good and you mix the song properly you can master it afterwards or you can master it alongside now i'm i'm going to explain both of the approaches uh, the approach i take is kind of a mix one i don't like mastering afterwards completely i mainly work on the loudness or the volume at the end but most of the compression and stuff i do it in the mixing stage itself now uh, it's also very difficult to like differentiate when you are done with the mixing stage and when you started with the mastering phase for me sometimes uh, i don't go like you know are chalo ho gaya mix ho gaya now i'm done with mixing and now let's move to mastering i don't generally trend that uh, gap very directly what i think of in a way is that if the mix is sounding good then i try to uh, put on some compression or slight limiting and if there are any issues which i notice i go back to the mixing phase to fix it and then come back to the mastering so it's never that i like ek ho gaya then you move to the other and never come back to mixing because mastering also sometimes reveals problems in your mixes that's also one of the things it does very well it can really sort of amplify whatever flaws you have in your mix so once you do notice that it's always best to go back to the mix to fix it at this stage where uh, you know there are problems with your master yahan pe maine bahut mistakes kiye hain what i used to do was try to you know eq the hell lot of my master and sab kuch mastering mein eq karke main hatane ka try karta tha but it is always better to do it in the mix stage and like i'm sure you guys know why i'm saying that because in the mix phase you have access to all the different instruments right so whichever instrument is causing the issue you can go ahead and fix that master is like sab kuch mix ho ke aaya hua hai then if you try to fix things it's going to affect a lot more things than just that problem so it's going to be like something like a, uh, chasing your own tail bolte hai na waisa ho jayega ki you're trying to fix a problem which uh, cannot be solved by mastering right mastering can never change the uh, relative balances of things matlab if i reduce let's say 2 decibels at 300 hertz it's not just doing that for the kick drum or for just the bass and just the snare it's doing for doing it for all of them at the same time right that's why it's a master so if you have problems in your snare then if you do it in the master then that's that will maybe solve it but that also applies that same eq to kick as well as bass and all the other instruments so maybe now they don't sound as good so you end up doing like crazy things and you don't go anywhere so for me it's always best to get my mix to a point where it's sounding good and then get to the mastering and for me mastering is basically just some additional compression and uh, maybe stereo image of it i don't generally like to do a lot of stereo imaging on my masters because i don't feel it it's necessary you can do all your uh, mastering in uh, i mean your stereo bits uh, you can do it in your mix phase and again i am just talking about the genres which are like you know rock and stuff if you if you talk about edm and stuff then sure you you like that wide thing right so you can put uh, like stereo imaging on your master channel as well for edm and stuff but uh, generally i don't like to do that for rock and sort of pop kind of things so that's the approach i take now uh, let's just uh, get into it and you know let's see where we go so you can see my screen right guys just give me a yes yes okay so uh, i'm going to import a mix here uh, this is a mix of uh, one of the recent songs i did just for fun with my bandmate uh, this is called rozana by a band called astito uh, 
so this is right now unmastered so this is just the wave file which i uh, sort of printed and it's just the mix there's no uh, there's no compression there's no there's nothing on the master uh, master channel right now so nothing is being applied to everything like sab kuch mix hua but there's no compression applied to the whole mix as such and there's no limiting and there's no stereo width applied so let's just give a listen to how this sounds okay let me know can if you can hear it also this is also one of the issues which sometimes we face was that audible yes okay everybody right you can hear everyone can hear it okay now um, one sort of note i would like to say is that zoom pe uh, apparently stereo nahi aata audio it's only mono so we probably cannot talk about stereo imaging <laughs> because we need stereo for stereo imaging so uh, just because of that issue i'm not sure we can talk about stereo imaging but uh, the rest of the things i i think we're good so yeah so i'll just let you listen maybe for 30 seconds of this this is a mix which i did like uh, two weeks back so ah uh, manish yeah yeah zoom pe stereo works you just have to go to the settings and enable it okay can you guide me like how to do that uh i think i have to go to the website first it's very complicated i remember doing it like a week ago if to go to the website wahan se if you enable it then it shows up on your desktop app uh stand weird so okay if it takes like couple of minutes it's fine i guess we can yeah it doesn't take that long it doesn't take that long it's okay can i log in or something here yeah once you log in then the settings um i think i have google Okay, where to go from here? The settings. settings. Yeah. And do I have to like rejoin the meeting for it to work? Or? No, no, no. As far as I know, no. But I'm not sure honestly. Okay, so you guys will have to let me know. Okay, if you can hear the stereo thing, once we enable this, uh, just give me a like. If you guys can like differentiate between mono and stereo, like sargam or something, you can let me know. Sure. Yeah. Scroll down. I mean, you should see an option that says "Enable Stereo Sound." I think. your app that should if you go to settings that should be enable stereo oh you also have to go for settings yeah yeah it's really weird okay, i'm going to preferences enable stereo yeah yeah oh, that's weird okay yes yeah, stereo now yes yeah, stereo now can you hear it yeah really uh yeah that was yeah, very weird on. phasing but yeah <laughs> okay let me know for this this song okay this once jo bhi gaya mono sorry mono it's mono mono hmm uh i wish can you try panning this completely to the left or something just for a test yeah yeah It's mono. It's mono. It's mono. Whoa! I mean, your your yeah. I think you should join again. Okay. Give me a second. I'll come back.
Um, I'm audible, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, let me know now. I'm again panning it to the left. Just let's do it once, and if it doesn't work, just proceed. Okay. Oh, no, I don't think it's enough. No. Is it like that? We everyone should enable the stereo or something. Something like that. Does anybody know any issue like that? I don't think that you guys will need to. Do that. Hold on, I'm trying to enable my stereo. We'll see if it works. One sec. Yeah. Mine is on you. Does the host have to do it or something? Uh. Allows you to select stereo audio in their client settings. So users, I believe. So you guys can also do it. I think. Can you can you do that once? Anybody? Even yeah, if I'll one guy works, then I'll ping the link if you want. I'm just going through the settings. It says allow users to select stereo audio in the client settings. So yeah, that allow you users. Uh -huh. Okay. And I think the host will have to do that. Um, yeah, I have done. The, I have done the stereo setting. It's on. Okay. Uh, so should we join again or something? Yeah, just try it one once more. Like try joining it again once more. I think we'll have to open the meeting again because see it says users, right? So you are the host for whom the users are there. So, okay, wait, so you will have, have to like close your close your zoom and open again. I think. Also, also I have one issue. See, uh, either niche is allow users to select original sound in the client settings. Does that help in any way? I'll just turn that on. Also. Mm -hmm. No, I think Anisha's sound is good enough. I mean, he's going through a sound card, so it won't matter. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, if it works, it works. But uh, let's get started on a couple of things first. Okay, just one last time. If uh, anybody has turned on that setting, can let me know if this is on the left. Anybody? No. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, we've wasted a couple of minutes there. Uh, we'll get started on this. So this is a song which I did a couple of weeks ago. Now let's get to mastering of this. Now the the thing about mastering for this song would be uh, look as I said, mastering was to get this song to translate as well as possible, right? Translate, I mean, translate to other sound systems. Now since this is a cover, right? This is a cover of a song. So there's already the original song on YouTube right now. And since it's a professionally mixed and mastered song, I know that that is a mix which is trans which translates very well to other systems. So if I use that as a reference for my master, then I can be sure that whatever I do, if I try to get it to sound as close as possible to that uh, cover or the YouTube thing, then it will translate well, right? And in case of like which are uh, in case of in case of songs which are not covers and all if you don't have like exact things you can still use like close by references so that's one thing i'll recommend if you if you are let's say mixing a song by i don't know not not song by any any, any band if you even if you're mixing your own uh, original songs um, if they have a certain vibe right you might have been inspired by certain bands or certain music right so try to use those things as a reference if they are available on youtube go to youtube.m youtube to mp3 i believe which helps you download uh, youtube videos as mp3 files just get that as an mp3 file import it into your DAW side by side and then master it and try to get it to sound as close as possible to that now it has happened to me sometimes ki ego kicks in and i be like q uh, karu matlab i i can ma master my own stuff and i don't have to listen to references and all but trust me, you don't. You never have enough enough experience for uh, 
doing a master on your own if you need to get the eq balance right you definitely definitely need to have references uh, so it's always better if you if you import some references reference tracks onto your daw and then master uh, keeping that as a reference point so i'm going to do that now i, I don't have it deleted already um, i think i have so i'll do it in front of you guys so i'll just go to youtube and search for rosana uh, this is a song by astip the band it's actually a pretty cool song um and i'll just download this as an mp3 so if you go to youtube.mp youtube to mp3 you'll be able to <clears throat> see the first link which um, if you put some uh, youtube link there it will uh, download it as a as an mp3 okay so this is the song and convert it here and just have it downloaded as an mp3 by the way anish abhi stereo aaya tha mere liye it worked yeah same hi there yeah. oh best best sahi hai so uh, everybody else can follow the same procedure as sargam i think you enabled uh, why na you, you went to your settings and enabled ha uh, uh -huh, i did the same stuff as you did same thing right yeah so i've pinged the link in the chat guys if you if you guys are not able to hear it in stereo or if you regardless have not done that uh, change i'll suggest you to do that so that you can follow uh, can you play uh, this uh, logic pro ka sound ek bar uh, i think youtube ka work ho raha hai abhi can you play this one once again oh. in stereo okay okay let me try this i'll turn this to the left no it's not okay no sargam nahi no, i think logic khag raha hai somewhere are baap re uh idhar kya karu yaar zoom audio karu kya i guess abhi batao yeah 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 it's on it's working ho gaya ha ha it's working abhi okay perfect ठीक है सॉरी अबाउट दैट डेज आई थिंक जूम ऑडियो पे डालना था मुझे या सो या एज आर सेइंग कि यू कैन गो हियर एंड जस्ट डाउनलोड वट एवर रेफरेंस यू माइट नीड सो नाउ दर आई डन दैट ऑलमोस्ट लेट्स जस्ट हैव इट इट नाउ वन थिंग आई लाइक टू डू इज सी नाउ नाउ दर आई हैव इम्पोर्टेड इट हियर आई जस्ट इम्पोर्ट इट टू माई डॉ लाइक दिस okay so can everybody here visually see that uh, the the track is extremely loud as compared to my unmastered track right yep you can see the waveform right so that's a acceptable level of volume but this isn't so we need to get it up in volume first okay so let's just try to do that first and then we'll move to uh, specific reference mastering and uh, eq stuff and all so Uh, one thing uh, before that i like to do is that i if i'm doing it in a mixing environment that is if i'm like doing mixing and mastering in the same project because that's what i do okay just as a back story this is not what i do like this is not how i master i don't have a wav file exported uh, of my mix and then i import it into a new session like this and then i master it i generally uh, do it in the same project itself like अगर जहां पे मिक्सिंग कर रहा हूँ पे मास्टर चैनल पे आई डू माय मास्टरिंग सो दस जस्ट अ बैक स्टोरी देयर सो लेट्स फॉर नाउ जस्ट लेट्स जस्ट वॉल्यूम ट्राई एंड वॉल्यूम मैच द द बैकिंग ट्रैक दैट इज द ओरिजिनल ट्रैक विद माय ट्रैक सो सो दैट यू नो वी कैन जस्ट कंपेयर सर्टन डिफरेंसेस दैट वी हैव इन टर्म्स ऑफ ईक्यू ओवरऑल बैलेंस एंड ऑल सो आई एल जस्ट प्ले द सॉन्ग एंड ट्राई टू गेट इट एट द सेम वॉल्यूम एज माय एज माय सॉन्ग हियर So I'll refer to this as my song, and this is the original song. Okay.
संभल गया वो जो संभल गया जिया यही सवाल है पास आसान नहीं दिल की बातें वहम है माई ट्रैक इज अट लॉट क्वाइट राइट सो द फर्स्ट थिंग आई एम गोन डू इज आई एम गोन पुट अ लिमिट एंड एनी लिमिट वर्क्स नाउ I'm sure you guys know what a limiter is, right? Is there anybody out here who does not know what a limiter is? One second, now would be the time to speak out. I'm slightly confused with how limiter works. Okay, so um, if I were to give a comparison between com- compressors and limiters, would that work for you? Do you know what a compressor is? If you attended my last last session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, if you can see me here, like in the video. Uh, what a compressor does it it basically reduces the volume of uh, of your audio track right based on certain parameters now uh, the amount by which it re- it reduces it is called the ratio if you remember right if i have set the ratio to let's say 2 to 1 or 2 is to 1 then uh, what it does is basically above the threshold whatever there's the whatever audio track uh, what, whatever audio signal is above that threshold it uh, cuts it down by half right it reduces it by half so that's what the ratio 2 is to 1 means now uh, limiter is very similar to a compressor except that the com- the the ratio is set to infinity to 1 now the way you can think about it is something like this no now uh, if you have an audio if this is my threshold and if this is the audio track going above it then what a compressor will do is basically reduce it to here right or maybe here or maybe here depending on the ratio now What a limiter will do is something like this. ये threshold है. अगर इसके ऊपर कुछ भी गया, it's not going to reduce it by a certain factor. It's just going to cut it off completely. So it's just going to make it equal to that threshold. You're getting it? So it's basically going to cut off everything above a certain th- certain threshold you put. It's not reducing it, but completely okay, okay. demolishing it. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's how it works. So. Uh, we use it generally for uh, mastering as per as compared to compression why the reason being uh, this this some there's a certain domain of uh, audio mixing called transient shaping okay if you don't know what transient shaping is that is fine but a general idea about it is that um, if i were to zoom in here okay and just focus on the upper track okay uh, so can you see these peaks here ये जो पीक्स है यहां पे दिख रहा है या राइट राइट सो दीस पीक्स आर कॉल्ड ट्रांजिएंट्स ओके इफ द द एंटायर थिंग इज माय वेव फॉर्म देन दीस थिंग्स आर कॉल्ड द ट्रांजिएंट्स ऑफ द वेव फॉर्म ओके द ट्रांजिएंट्स आर बेसिकली द पीक्स द द स्पाइक्स इन द वॉल्यूम राइट नाउ व्हेन यू हैव अ सॉन्ग यू डोंट हैव अ लॉट ऑफ ट्रांजिएंट्स कमिंग आउट एंड बाय व्हाट एंड व्हाट आई मीन बाय दैट इज दैट व्हेन यू लिसन टू अ सॉन्ग व्हिच इज ऑन द रेडियो और समथिंग अगर कार में सुन रहे हो अगर ऐसा कुछ ऑडियो सुनोगे ना लाइक विच इज लाइक वेरी स्पाइकी एंड यू नो हैज लॉर्ड ऑफ स्पाइक्स एंड ट्रांजिएंट्स इट विल ब्लो योर हेड ऑफ ओके वी डोंट जनरली हैव टू मेनी ट्रांजिएंट्स इन 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 आर सॉन्ग एंड दिस इज दिस इज लाइक जनरली द केस फॉर रॉक एंड दीज काइंड ऑफ जॉनरस अगेन मे नॉट बी ट्रू फॉर क्लासिकल और मे बी जहाज और समथिंग बट on like radio rock and radio pop and whatever is going on right now like bollywood and stuff uh, the transients are not that prominent you you don't get like a blast of sound when you when you hear a, a radio right radio song ko jab sunte you don't get blasts of song and they go, go in and out it doesn't work like that it it sounds very consistent right so what is done generally is that uh, these transients right they are basically cut off okay and you do that with a limiter now compressor will reduce it but will not get rid of it right as i said so we use limiters for that purpose when we really need we we really need to get rid of the transients use a limiter okay so that's what this does and this here is the gain knob now uh, different limiters have different settings some some of them have something called threshold gain and stuff this one just has a gain and the understanding of this gain is that you can think of it like the overall volume now just uh, just uh, see where the audio signal that i have here uh, where it's peaking okay 
and what I mean by peeking is that I want you to have a look at this section of the, I'll just move my mouse so that you can see it, this section here, just have a look at the value here and just pay attention to the, pay attention to the maximum value, okay? Uh, we'll just have a look here. Sorry. Point four. Now, obviously, um, I'm sure you guys know that uh, there is nothing like plus two dBs. The the volume can max out at zero dBs inside your DAW. So the volume ranges from minus infinity to zero. So we have a we have a peak of minus point four, which is very close to zero. So it's not that we are we are not loud, but we are not loud at certain sections. We are not not loud on average. If you guys know statistics. This is kind of the max of that data set, right? It's not the average. We want the average of the data set to go up. We want it closer to zero. And as I said, zero is the maximum volume. So we want it to be loud, right? So we want to get it closer to zero. Now, it's not that you, you don't get like peaks and stuff. Sometimes if you have an unmastered song, it can still peak out. It can still go beyond zero decibels and actually clip off. It can actually distort. But that still does not mean that you have a loud enough mix. The reason being, these transients, right, these peaks, they are the culprits. They are the culprits because they are the ones who are going to peak out that, uh, that meter there. But they are kind of like the outliers of that data set, right? If one transient is going to be zero, but the rest of the song is like minus 4 dB or minus 5 dB, pe betha hai, that still won't like we will not perceive it as loud, right? Because Baki Sara Gana, like most of the stuff is like at, is hovering around like minus five decibels. So it's not loud, but it definitely has a maximum, which is more than zero. So that is why we get rid of transients. We don't want these kind of peaks or these kind of transients to limit our, our, uh, our, I would say our limit of volume, right? If we touch zero dB, then I'm doing it now, right? I'm already touching minus 0.4. It's not that I have not touched zero. The, the reasoning is that I don't want just one or two portions of my audio to like be close to zero. I don't want just the, the transients to achieve that thing. I just transients ke through nahi lana hai, 0.4. I want the overall song to have an average volume, which is closer to zero, not just the transients. So that's why we cut those transients off so that once those transients are gone, once those culprits are gone, then I can rise up the overall volume of the song, right? I can rise up the volume of the overall track and not have those transients peak out the, the meter, right? I hope that I'm making sense here. Anybody have any doubts so far? Okay. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at any point. So this is what, it, uh, what the limiter is achieving. Basically, when I increase the gain here, it's increasing the volume of the, of the overall track by whatever I set here. If I set it to plus 16, it's increasing the volume of this entire track by 16 decibels, but it's going to clip off everything that is above zero decibels. Okay. That's how this limiter works. It's, it's not going to do like abhi just a minus 0.4 pe tha na, peak. Ab plus 16 karne ke baad wo peak uh, plus 15.6 penny over. It's not the case because whatever is above zero, this limiter, this plugin here will help me cut it off. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to increase it till where I find that this, uh, this track or this unmastered track is sounding pretty close in volume to my reference track. Right. So let's try and do that. Let's sw keep switching between the, the, real reference track, the original track and my unmastered track. And I'll slightly start increasing this volume. Okay. Let's start. So I'll jump down to some section, which is kind of loud so that you can master it pretty accurately. Good 
enough level for uh, for for now it sounds pretty close now uh, this there's a bit more of problems here now if you take a look at the limiter when it's playing it will show you whatever the peaks it's cutting off i told you right jo peaks hote hain it's getting rid of those transients right now the 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 graph here in this plugin will show you all the peaks or the transients or the signal which it is cutting off okay so just have a look here whatever you see in red is whatever it get whatever is getting cut off okay so have a listen here a red dips here give me a yes yes right so those were the transients which were getting cut off wo sare jo bhi red points the those are the dips which the limiter made so that it get rid of that transient for me now the issue is that if you see you can just keep going right i can just increase it to plus 30 decibels and have the loudest mix ever it will blow the heads off of any mix right but the issue with that is that now you are getting rid of too many transients and now it's not just the transients that you're getting rid of but you are now creeping into the actual audio itself matlab tum actual audio ko bhi clip karna start kar doge not just the transients but the rest of the stuff is also now getting like squished upon right now you don't want to do that so you want to have a good balance between the transient reduction and the overall volume okay uh one more sort of uh, idea about volume is that there are certain levels in volume absolute volume levels for certain platforms for example something like spotify uh, generally uh, like has their own mastering sort of uh, idea like idea idea any standard i would say uh, that basically tells you like what's the optimum level of volume that your song should be at for it to be played at spotify the best now there are different standards for different different platforms that is also one of the issues so if you guys are ever ever putting out stuff on youtube or spotify or anything before doing any mastering just have a look at those websites and they'll have this uh, like information up there so they'll give you like uh, some information as to how how much uh, volume they're looking for now the issue with the limiter here is that um, do you guys see that uh, the only thing i can measure here is the peak right i can only see the peak level here the average volume of this track i am doing only by ear right jo gana original gaane ka volume tha i'm just trying to get it close to the ball park matlab sirf usi range mein lane ka try kar raha hu but i'm not doing it scientifically i'm doing it by my ear right now the problem with that is that the actual average volume of the track can actually differ right and there are different measures of average volume now peak is very simple like peak to tumhe dikhta hai yahan pe that's your peak simple but the average volume you can also measure those things now there are a few plugins in uh, in uh, in logic if you go into metering uh, there are these meters called level meter and loudness meter okay if i were to open level meter it just gives me peak see so here it's saying level peak that means it's showing me the peak uh, that is the maximum value of the of the signal at any point right now i don't need this thing for that i already have my fader here right ye mujhe already dikhata hai ki kitna volume hai right i don't need this thing but there's additional things here like if you click here you you can go into something called rms and p true peak and stuff now like some mathematicians out here might know what rms stands for right kisi ko pata hai rms kya hoga <coughs> root and square yeah so rms stands for root mean square so it's basically um, it's calculating the mean in a way right it's pretty obvious there so this meter will give you the average volume now iska jo uh, unit hota hai thoda alag hota hai right if you if i if i were to play this it will now calculate the average volume for me so i'll just play it and let's just see what this shows us
जो पिघल गया वो दिया नहीं वो जो संभल गया जिया यही सवाल है Ten twenty seconds, I guess twenty thirty seconds. So this is what it gave me. If you see here, it's saying RMS of minus seven point five and minus eight. Now the yeah, अलग अलग क्यों हैं क्योंकि left right में अलग अलग हैं. Now that happens in a stereo mix, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but this is what's important. Like it's around minus seven point seven five, right? That's your RMS value. Now these are the kind of measures which companies like Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube. Uh, will provide you right they'll give you uh, kind of these values and they'll tell you ki itna rms rms value is good for our platform so they are basically giving you standards by which you can upload your songs to their platform for them to sound their best okay now levels are one thing there's one more measure which is called loudness and this has a different uh, different i would say unit it's not measured in decibels but i forget the actual uh, unit for it it's measured in lu's i believe which is loudness units so lu's mein this will give you the loudness now i'll not get into what like the details scientific details of why loudness is different from peak and stuff but this again gives you an idea of how loud your uh, loud your song is not just the peak but the average right and these values also are given by like companies like spotify and stuff as a standard for you guys to set so you can make sure that your songs are in their uh, standard close by right us us standard se match ho raha hai agar then it's good to go there in terms of volume okay so aajkal ke zamane mein like it's better if you do different if, if you do different masters for different platforms okay that way they can sound their best on each one of them Okay, so let's just uh, listen to what this gives us now. This is the LUFS meter or the loudness meter. Now there are two different here. Um, you can see MSI, right? Do you see guys uh, here MSI? Can we read read that? Yeah, yeah, we can see that. Yeah. So M is something like um, mean, I believe, and S is like short, and I is like long, like basically interval, like I think something which to us. So these are three different measures of uh, average basically so i is the i is the i would say the most general uh, loudness measure uh, if you play the song from start to finish with this plug in on it will measure every single uh, point of your uh, of your track and see what the volume is and basically give out an average for the entire song okay so you'll have a good idea of how loud your song is in general and s is something like uh, which is a short so this this gives you an average over a shorter amount of time now the advantage here is that this can tell you the difference in volume between your chorus and your verse samajh rahe hai main kya bol raha hu because generally your verses will be less in volume right in terms of its loudness also like not that loud and impactful and energetic so the s value of your verses or your pre chorus or whatever they'll be slightly less and chorus may this value will go up the i value probably won't go up because again it's a long term average so itna effect nahi hoga but the s value will get affected dramatically and so will the m value i think so that way you can actually check how much is the difference in volume on average compared between your verses and your chorus not just the overall song so with this we come to something called dynamic range okay dynamic range is basically a measure of how dynamic your song is now if i were to do a limiting here just for example if i were to like push this to plus 30 and hit play button i won't i won't kill your ears now but if i were to do that as i said it's going to get rid of all the transients and stuff right so can you imagine that kuch dynamic rahega hi nahi it will be like no peaks nothing it will be like just a flat thing right so there will be literally no difference between your chorus and your verse it will all sound the same right it will all be loud but there is no relative loudness see that's one of the important things about uh, music as well like 
it's not just about the volume it's about the relative volume if you have a verse which is quieter and a chorus which is louder it's much more impactful than having a overall song which is really really loud but uske verse aur uske chorus mein volume mein kuch difference hi nahi hai that will be less impactful than these kind of things so that's why dynamic range is important it drives your listener in terms of energy right so the s value gives you a basic sort of estimation of how much your dynamic range is so you want to keep an eye eye on that also but in general this is the value which will give you the overall loudness and again this is also one of the values which spotify and apple music give you uh, for you to set so mastering is more about these kind of things than like stereo imaging i think okay so let's just uh, see what this gives us jo pighal gaya wo diya rahe wo jo sambhal gaya so this is one of the meters which will which will give you those kind of measures so you could see that the m value was varying varying rapidly because it's really really like it's averaging over a very small amount of time but s is a bit more like longer and i is actually integrated so that is the integrated value uh, i'm not sure why that was not showing up i actually never use this plugin so what i use is uh, actually something called levels by mastering the mix this is a very similar plugin like it also gives you peaks and LUFS, which was like the loudness units, and uh, you can actually set things like you know you can set built-in presets like uh, mastering for uh, Spotify and mastering for SoundCloud and YouTube. So it already knows what the standards are. You don't need to go ahead and uh, like research it yourself. And once you do, let's say, pick Spotify or something, now it will tell you if your like track is too loud or too uh, less in volume compared to the standard of the spotify now so that's one thing you could use as a step up but you can do it with anything so it's just a metering so the actual changes will happen in the limiter just for the volume sake i'm saying so that's what i like to do first i like to get it in the general ballpark of volume as the reference song and i just make sure that the volume is within acceptable limits of um, of platforms like uh, spotify and uh, youtube and stuff so now once you're done with that um there's one additional problem which comes about uh, which i'll uh, get into now if i were to again play the song and uh, you have a look at the transients uh, just just uh, bear with me here so just i'll just play it and just uh, have a look at the uh, cut off or whatever the signal is getting cut off just have a look here you guys see this like valleys here a lot like deeper valleys dikh rahe hain kya kisi ko yeah yeah i'll just make this a bit bigger so you can see if i can okay i can't uh there's a way i think one second yeah okay this <laughs> this is much better so uh, i want i want you guys to pay attention to the valleys okay valleys matlab the dips that come in and make sure you keep that in mind that uh, the scale is here okay so this is minus 2 and this is minus 6 so if you see a valley which is like this that's a dip in volume of 4 decibels okay which is quite significant so i'm just going to play the song and uh, just pay attention to the valleys now not the actual cutoffs but the jo baki ka song hai usme just notice the valleys basically in the blue signal okay whatever is coming in blue just uh, Take a look at the valleys. 
वो जो संभल गया yeah so yeah yeah so uh, what happens is that that's ki- that's kind of an indication for me that you have not reached the uh, the maximum potential volume that this can achieve the reason being is that uh, itna dynamic hone ke baad bhi it may not sound as dynamic to you because these are like valleys which are very short okay these are not like valleys across uh, like chorus and verse like it's across like ek drum beat ke beech mein hi there's there's a lot of dynamic things happening so what i try to do to achieve a bit more of a tight sound is that i like to put some compression before my limiting okay now this is assuming that you have not put any compression on the mix bus beforehand okay so what i'm going to do is just uh, maybe open up a compressor maybe the c2 by like fab filter i like this one also so <clears throat> the way i do it is um, i like to put on two compressors sometimes um the reason being that i like to separate out my fast compression and uh, my slow compression now what is so slow compression the slow compression is basically the compression which uh, gives you the energy okay and the fast compression is something which uh, makes the makes the sound tighter okay and the final step is the limiting which will get rid of any uh, huge peaks right so that's how i like to approach it i don't like just put limiter and just put compressor i i do it in a sequence so that i can have control of the process okay the so let's assume that this compressor here is my uh, is my slow compressor okay so i actually like to use a different compressor one by slate digital i like to use the red plug in here don't worry about how this looks or something but i like how this compressor works so um what i'm going to have here is that the attack here is going to be a bit slower okay something like here um, and i'm going to try and compress it let's say couple of dbs or maybe 3 or 4 dbs at the maximum okay and i'm sure everybody knows what attack and re- release on a compressor is yeah if anybody doesn't can can let me know <clears throat> so i'm going to have a slow attack here and uh, the release i generally like to put it on uh, auto release uh, so that will be basically like release will be automatic as as per the song this is also like a uh, a feature which is available in uh, default plugins of logic also so i think other dawls might also have that thing so now i'm just going to increase the ratio now to let's say 3 or 3 or 4 i like to go for 3 just sounds better so now i'll just keep on reducing the threshold until i see a bit of gain reduction here and again as i said i don't like to go beyond uh, 4 dbs at the most so let's add some compression here jo pighal gaya wo diya rahe wo jo sambhal gaya compression going on now so um if you were like paying attention to what i did i basically just uh messed around with the attack mostly 
um, I didn't want to like get rid of too many of the transients here because as I said, I keep it reserved for the next compression which is going to come. Uh, so I just fitted on with that mainly and I decreased the ratio a bit because it was too harsh, I think. And I increased something called the high pass filter. What, the, what this uh, helps us achieve is that the compressor does not react to the extreme low end. Okay? It reacts to everything above 40 hertz but not anything below 40 hertz. Uh, the reason for that, it, it kind of tightens up the sound for me. If you compress everything, it, then it sounds a bit more pumpy sounding, like it, it feels very too compressed, even if it's not. I, I don't know if that's the right wording, but kind of gives me that feeling. Now, one more thing I like to do is something called drive here. Now, this is something that's not, that's not available in every plugin, but this is kind of just giving a bit more bite to the, to the, to the track. Uh, you can achieve sort of a similar result with maybe some saturation. So if uh, somebody was asking me for saturation as well, right? So this is kind of the uh, knob which helps you uh, achieve the, the saturation a bit. So saturation is like distortion, right? So you can add subtle distortion on your master track to make the song more exciting. Now, uh, that's a good sort of segue getting into uh, saturation as well. Now, I'll also like to use saturation on my masters. The reason being, it also helps in sort of rounding out the transients, okay? Uh, if you try it yourself, uh, if you put a lot of distortion on a, a track like a drum track, then what you'll notice after a point is that the transients generally sort of smooth down. They, they reduce in, in, in volume. So, uh, that's also one of the better ways to... Uh, sort of reduce the transients, not just limiting. Um, you can use distortion or slight amount of saturation as well. So I'll do that afterwards. But now that we've got, got a good compression going on, I'll just add a bit of a drive. Won't make that much of an audible difference, but it adds up over, over time. So once that's done, um, I'll actually move into saturation. So that's a good uh, segue into it. So uh, this again may not be that much of an audible difference. Um, what I'll do is I'll try and uh, make it audible to you guys. Hopefully you can hear it. So I've turned off all the plugins which I did so far, all the limiting and all the compression. I'm just going to add a simple saturation here. Okay. And again, different saturations have different characters. I like to use again, slate digital saturations uh, by the use of something called a tape machine. Uh, this also helps in up, uh, like lifting the low end a bit. I like it a lot actually. Uh, it kind of is a slight EQ which lifts up the bass. You can think of it like that. So again, a bit more of a round, full sound. I like that. So um, forget about the settings here. Not not that important. But the point is that these this sort of tape saturation or tape distortion uh, helps you in getting rid of the transients a bit more. So you can make it even louder, right? So I'll just... Uh, sort of set it to a rough setting here. Doesn't matter how, how much uh, I put here. It's, it's not really that important. Just a bit of vibe there, I guess you could say. So, it just gets rid of the some of the transients and also lifts up the bass a bit. So you can try some tape saturation on your masters also. So I would suggest that because uh, limiting is not always the best way to get rid of transients. Uh, sometimes a bit of saturation can help do that in a much more musical way. Not just cutting off the transients, basically sort of rounding them if you, if you can imagine that. It's not just a flat cut, but it's kind of rounding it. Kind of like compression, but slightly different in a way because it applies in it a, in a harmonic fashion. Okay. <clears throat> so you can, you can try that on your mixes also. Now, again, as I said, it doesn't matter which tape you use. Like you can also use uh, the default distortions on, uh, on logic also. Like it's, it's fine. So if you go into like saturation, I think there's a good distortion here. So. There's something called overdrive, which is a standard default default plugin in Logic. So this also applies a bit of uh, slight saturation and you can think of it like a tape saturation. So um, 
it, it it's not important to always use like fancy plugins and stuff you can do it with uh, any any uh, simple plugin okay because these sort of slight distortions are not not dramatically audible okay they just help you achieve slight things they're not that dramatic so it doesn't really matter if you use like slate digital distortion versus like a default distortion plugin in your daw so you can use anything you like so let's try and uh, use use the use the uh, default plugin here jo pighal gaya zero This is a very good uh, uh, way to actually hear this. So what I want you to do is actually focus here, okay? Uh, I'll just show. Yeah, here. So just focus there. Listen to or not listen. I guess see the transients, okay? You can actually see the transients, right? The meter will peak to a certain point. The moment I enable the saturation or this distortion, you'll not hear an you'll not hear the volume go up, okay? i've kind of made sure of that when i turn this plugin on you won't actually hear a volume spike or a volume decrease for that matter you'll actually hear the volume kind of staying the same on average but pay very close attention to this meter here and you'll actually see that the meter does not jump up as much it actually goes just to a certain limit now that actually gives you an indication that the transients have been cut off but without affecting the overall volume so it's kind of like limiting but in a very musical way okay so pay attention here and give me a good yes if you guys did see that this is quite cool okay so one two things to notice the overall volume or the average volume that you'll hear will not change it will sound like the same volume but you'll hear you'll see that the transients are now not there the the peak is not that high now okay so pay attention i'm going to turn off the plugin right now Play, play the song and in midway i'm going to turn it on and the moment i turn it on just have a look here and you'll see the peak kind of going down okay here we go uh, anish anish one more thing uh, uh when you're playing uh, turn off your video so like we won't get a lag here this man okay okay sure yeah yeah good now yep okay so uh listen to what what i just said okay so take a look at the uh, meter here the moment i turn this plug in on okay so i'll keep it beside here so you can see okay go ahead jo pighal gaya wo diya rahe wo jo sambhal gaya yeah yeah were you able to see that the peak was not going as high yeah it was much more consistent right you could hear that the um, volume did not change a lot but still the transients were not that high the peaks got uh, lower right so that's one way to do it but in this case i could hear a bit of distortion like real distortion on my master so I don't really want to exaggerate it this much, so I'll decrease the drive a bit. Maybe put it at two dBs, and I'll decrease the output again to sorry, increase the output again to balance that out. So I'll again make sure that there's no volume change here. So give me a second. subtle thing now so you can again probably if you notice here carefully you can see that the transients again don't go as high but this is much more subtle now so i'll do it once again uh, the folks who can see it and who can notice it just give me a yes okay hal gaya wo diya rahe wo jo sambhal gaya no you could see that right 
no? Yeah, yeah, we could see that, Anish. Okay, perfect. So that's one way to uh, do this kind of thing. So the tape is much more of a subtle way to do it. So I just like to put it there. Now, after that, I'll uh, engage this compression which I had. So uh, let's just listen to how this sounds after compression. <laughs> So that's the next thing I like to do. Now, the next step which I do is, as I said, I like to put a compressor which is really fast uh, to to catch any more transients which are not un, like, not wanted. Uh, so I'll just uh, put some rough settings here to uh, catch the transients. Okay, so you can see that now. That's uh, very subtle, but again, it's catching a bit of the transients and making the tight, uh, making making the song a bit, bit more tight sounding. Okay. Now, after that, the last plugin obviously is a, a limiter for me. So you don't generally put anything after the limiter, okay? Uh, because whatever you do there might uh, might actually peak the song. Like it actually can uh, make your song a bit more distorted. So. I like to put this as a last plugin. Okay. So again, let's just uh, put some uh, slide settings here so that we can balance it with the with the reference track. Okay. It sounds uh, really close in volume as well as it sounds uh, sounds a lot more tighter without all the all the compression and the tape and all, and all. So one last time, I'll just uh, give you guys a A B of without all the plugins and except the limiter. I'll keep the limiter on so that you can hear the volume being the same, but you'll hear the the kind of tightness going away. Okay, so I'll just turn it off in the middle. snare so if you guys do want to hear this difference here try to pay attention to the snare okay once again and try to imagine that the snare is kind of pushing back it's not as in your face anymore it's kind of 
sitting nicely with this with the song itself okay the moment i turn it off it will like jump up and it will sound a lot more attacky and it will not uh, like fit well it it sounds a bit like hitting me in the face it doesn't sound that great quite subtle but uh, it's there so the snare in terms of like punchiness it jumps jumps down a bit after i put the compression and all so uh, that's kind of the approach i take with that so i don't like to put like a lot of things here there's just some basic things the the main thing is to do do mastering with your with a purpose okay so never just like master for the sake of mastering don't just put plugins like studio imaging and um like whatever like 3d enhancing <laughs> i don't even like sonic enhancers and stuff exciters and uh, maximizers and stuff just for the sake of it don't do that uh, listen to what changes are actually being made to the song try to uh, be aware of the actual changes that are being made so again it comes down to your monitoring system if you have a good enough monitoring system you can actually hear these differences if you mix through like uh, 20 rupees ke earbuds or something obviously you will not be able to tell the difference so uh, have a good monitoring system first and then actually delve into the real uh, mastering until and unless you don't i would say that just basic eq and basic uh, limiting will will be sufficient for you so you can just do that and uh, be done with your mastering because uh, at that point of time you can't really listen to subtle things so there's no point in uh, doing all all these kind of excite ex- exciters and compression and tape saturation to things which you can't really hear right so at that point of time it's best better if you just do some basic eq and limiting and be done with it or if you want you can just uh, send it across to a, a mastering engineer and have it done for you okay so um that 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 is kind of the basic mastering thing i would say so just for uh, for demonstration purpose i'll print this to a new track so that you can see how it is differing in, in differing in volume uh, with the with the unmastered track oh shit i replaced it sorry guys <laughs> i replaced it give me a second i have to undo this or it let it be actually so you can actually see that it's it now looks a lot more like the original song right can you see that yep fairly close almost close yeah in terms of volume so uh, if i were to like do it a bit bit more so there's you can't really tell but on average yeah i mean it's fine right so you can be sure that you know it's it's not like drastically quieter or drastically louder than your then your reference track so the very last thing i can just do a simple check is that i can put that level metering thing and i just like to make sure that my volumes are correct okay so i'll just uh, show that quickly i use the levels thing so um, let me just like put across a spotify thing and i'm pretty sure this is going to like peak out because i mastered a bit out too much i think so the volume should have been a bit less so let's see what this says about about our track so far so already the peak is above right like peak is beyond what spotify would want you to now don't take this as a like um, like do or die situation it's fine if it goes goes by like 0.1 or 0.2 but like if it if it's it's consistently going beyond a certain value or the certain standard then you to, you need to go back and make the certain changes now LUFS is again the measure of loudness, and to be able to like accurately measure this, don't play, don't ever uh, play your LUFS meter from the beat, like from the middle. Beach message, chalu mat karo, because what the LUFS meter will see is like loud, 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 right? 
so it will say that oh it's too loud but songs generally don't like start with ah, right so they generally gradually go up in 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 volume right you have your intro and then your verse and then your chorus so it's a much better metric if you if you do it uh, over time and that means that play your songs from the very beginning and then measure the loudness don't don't uh, play your track from here and try to measure the loudness because you are missing out on all the all the information that is before it right you need to give the loudness measure all the pieces right you need to give the entire track for it to accurately measure it so always play your tracks from the start and then uh, play it and then like measure the loudness okay so this is the short short uh, volume and this is the longer one s yes and i so i need to make some changes like uh, i can't really keep it at this level otherwise it won't sound the best in in spotify like so we won't really have that big of a problem in youtube because i downloaded downloaded this, this auto off of youtube right so i need to set that standard as youtube because i'm mastering to that now We can't really hear you over the song. Oh, okay. I turned it down even then. Okay. Um. Anyway, so uh, I was saying that uh, just make sure uh, that you know these kind of st standards are like checked. So, uh, just that. So, make sure you you have a note of that. That's what I was saying. Right. So that's kind of the basics of mastering. I would say. Um. Is there any questions you have so far? 
so what i would have done is that i would have, i would have wouldn't have pushed the limiter that much actually so i would have basically like put it at 3.3 or something let's listen to how that sounds is the volume now guys so be aware the volume is going to increase budiya rahe wo jo sambhal gaya I can I can sort of dig it. It's fine. So if I were to put a, a level meter after it now, um, hopefully we are in the limits of YouTube. Let's say so. If I do it one last time, let's see how it fares. close to my sort of uh, metric right my standard so it's fine if it goes like a bit here and there just make sure it's not too much so so that's kind of uh, what mastering is about on the very basic level obviously so there's a lot more things to it um, again i didn't go into like eq balancing because my mix was already uh, sounding pretty decent uh, in terms of like sort of balance of frequencies i would say uh, again like if your uh, track does not have good eq it's always best to get, like go back into the mixing phase and actually do some changes if you're finding like specific problems otherwise if you just want to do some broad strokes it's it's fine to do it in the mastering phase because that's what it's for so like let's suppose if you want to increase the overall uh, sort of treble i would say so you can do that here just put a eq before everything and just uh, pull pull up the eq of it and sometimes it's it's uh, better if you use something called a linear phase eq uh, that is generally the better or the norm for mastering uh, i won't go into the details why it's so but uh, you can go ahead and research that for yourself uh, you can try adding a linear phase eq and uh, doing your mastering eqs there okay so if i just increase the treble slightly here that's fine so i wouldn't say that if you if you if you uh, if you happen to like uh, do these kind of eqs in your mastering phase right like jumps of 15 decibels at 800 hertz this is a very good indication that your mix is not good <laughs> because uh, what mastering should look like is something like this like it should be really really subtle moves maybe half a db here half a db there right and again if if you don't have a good enough monitoring system then these moves are pointless you you will not be able to hear them so again it goes back to the chain right so make sure your mix is good make sure you have a good monitoring setup 
and make sure you have recorded things properly, then you'll have to do less and less work in the mastering phase. Your tracks will already sound good. So it'll get just better. Like it, it, there's no chance of it getting like worse. So that you can do. Uh, just put a EQ and do your general moves there. So any more questions or we can close. So I had one question about mixing. Uh, the, yeah. So uh, what would you advise for MIDI channels? Should we first convert them to wave files before we start mixing or should we mix it as MIDI itself? Um, if you're good enough, like if you're good with the, the sound of the MIDI, I would say definitely print it and then mix it because, um, I've done this a lot. Like I've, I've had, I've, I've done mixing sessions where all of my MIDI tracks are just MIDI tracks. None of them have been printed. And the, the sort of reasoning I gave myself for those, those moves was that, oh, I'll have more options. I can go back and change something if I don't like it and all right. I used to do that, do that for a long time and suffer like massive CPU hogs and stuff. I couldn't like play five seconds of the song without it, uh, like overclocking my CPU. Uh, in addition to that, I, I did not know how to commit. Uh, and that's a big issue. I would say one of the biggest issues I've seen, at least for myself is that, uh, you really need to learn how to commit to things. If you think it's good enough, print it and move ahead. Don't, don't like uh, try to make it the most perfect sounding, whatever, like perfect sounding piano or snare, whatever. Don't make, try to make it like the most perfect sounding piano ever. Right. If you do those kind of things, you'll, you'll, you'll end up in a loop where you uh, don't find anything satisfying. So I would say that when you have, when you're happy with a certain thing, go ahead and print it and save yourself the, the, the pain. I would say that that's much more of an advantage than keeping your options open, I think. And also like, uh, since this was a cover, so you had a reference track easily available. So what about yeah. originals? What can we use as reference for mastering? Yeah. So as I said, for those, um, you might be inspired by something, right? When you made that song. Mm. So, <clears throat> there might be some songs which you know that are sort of similar to that that uh, song that you're making the original song so it doesn't need to be like uh, really really close If bhi nahi hai ki tere song mein do guitars hain to reference track mein bhi do guitars hone chahiye it's nothing like that but it's more of a vibe and sort of an energy okay if you think that your original song matches in terms of energy and vibe with a certain song then that song will serve perfectly as the reference track. I think. Yo, Anish, uh, I had one question. Yeah. So, are we yeah. mastering, you read all manually, right? So, yeah. there are softwares uh, which, like, you know, Ozone, uh, Isotope, you know, uh, which do, like, you know, a primary kind of mastering and they give us, you know, this is something you can start with. Uh, have you tried one of those? Um, I did, but um, to be very, very honest with you, uh, I never found them to be any help because at the end of the day, those presets or you know pre-made things, they are made for certain kinds of uh, volumes and stuff. If you don't have that same volume and uh, you know a similar volume, I'm not the same. If you don't have your mix at a similar volume and uh, at a similar sort of vibe and stuff they they don't give you a lot of um, freedom i think like uh, it it doesn't sound as good as you know if you learn it yourself and do it because yeah so they're, they're made for um, pre-made things like you know somebody made that preset uh, while mastering a certain song so it's obvious that those those presets would work better on those kind of volumes and those kind of genres more than other things so if you use let's say a, pre, a preset for mastering which was made by a uh, nolly who does like metal songs and stuff and you apply that mastering preset to a jazz song which you are doing i don't think that's the best approach because in no way oh, can i'm it talking like, about uh, these uh, softwares which have some kind of ai and all of stuff that thing 
Oh, those. Okay. Uh, no, man. Actually, I've not experimented with it a lot. Um, according to me, there's no need for like getting into those kind of measures unless you have a really big problem. And what I have seen with those kind of softwares, uh, specifically something like Isotope Insight, if you know knew about it, um, it basically is a plugin which will tell if there's any problems with your mix. Um, and I I really like to focus on mix, right? It's not the problem with your master, but it's a problem with your mix. So those plugins really help you sort of tell you if there's any problems with your mix, like if there's any mixing issues. Um, they won't really tell if your master is bad because master varies between songs and songs but a general mix should have a rough good balance of all the frequencies so it can really you know tell you if there's any holes in your uh, mix so you can use that for um, like uh, mix issues but i don't feel that it's the best if you if you use it on your uh, mastering process so um, I feel it's better if you use a reference track and you use your ears to sort of match it more than you rely on a software to tell you that. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Hey, Anish, I have a question. Yeah. Um, pros or cons to, you know, setting up your master bus like during mixing and tweaking it continuously? Like, is that more helpful, less helpful? How does it work? Uh, you can do it, as I said, I, I do that myself. But what I do is that I set it to a certain level and forget about it. I don't like, um, while mixing, I don't like uh, go ahead and tweak. After every single move I make in a mix, I don't go ahead and uh, make a move in my mastering chain. Like I set it to a certain level and I forget about it for a while. I then and go then on and mix How it. do you set up like compressors and stuff or tape machines while before you mix? I mean, won't the levels constantly change? Yeah, so you'll be able to audibly hear, see, uh, if you have a, let's say a tape saturator, then if on your mix bus that I'm saying, um, like the mastering chain basically. So if you have a tape saturation on that and if you start mixing and let's say during mixing your overall volume kind of goes up. So obviously it will like sort of push the tape saturation a bit more, right? It will distort it. But uh, you'll, you'll actually be able to hear it in a way once you get used to it. If it's going beyond a certain limit, you'll be able to hear it. And same goes for compressors. Like if you set it to a certain volume, it'll, it, 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 it'll work. But if, if let's say in your mix phase, you consistently push your volume uh, like more and more and uh, your compressor starts reacting more and more, you'll audibly able to be able to hear that your overall track is being compressed a lot more. So at that point of time, I go, go and just uh, pull down my compressor. But until then, I just put it there so that I can hear what a general compression would sound like on my on my mix bus, just to get an overall flavor. Because uh, like these are two different approaches, right? There's something called bottom up approach and there's something called top down approach. So some people use the top down approach, and by that I mean that they put all the plugins on their master track first, and then they proceed to mix. And some people do the opposite; they they mix first and then they master. Both are fine in their own terms. Uh, I prefer to do it in a mixed fashion where I put a compressor and a limiter. Not not a limiter. I don't put a limiter. Simple compressor and maybe some tape saturation uh, and go ahead and mix my track. And if it's sounding a bit too distorted, that is my overall sound. Song is sounding a bit too pushed or compressed or whatever. I know that there's a problem in my master chain because the entire song is uh, affected. So until and unless that happens, uh, it, it's fine for me because uh, that's what mas mastering is supposed to do anyway, right? It's, it's, it's supposed to compress it. So uh, it, it doesn't sound uh, bad at all. Like it'll start, start sounding bad once it's pushed a bit beyond a limit. And at that point of time, you'll be able to hear what the problems are. So uh, that's the approach I like to take. All right, cool, thanks. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, Anish. Uh, so after this, uh, like, uh, is there any place where we can contact you for a review of the tracks? You know. Oh uh, sure, man. So um, I'll put across my phone number on the chat, so you can WhatsApp me on on that number. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, man. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so any other questions? Okay, I guess uh, we're done with the questions. So thanks, thanks all for joining. Hope you learned something. Yeah. So thanks a lot, Anish. This was a great session. I mean, lots of new stuff. I'm looking into detail at all of these waveforms. It was really great, great. great to learn.